Okay, so um, uh, you wanted to go into maybe the documentation or where do you want to go next? You, wherever you would like. Okay, because uh, let's say the text messages if you want to okay. start with that. Um, throughout this entire sting, uh, Solomon Dweck can be seen on a lot of the tapes texting back and forth with the FBI agents. And in the trial of Baldini, and thank God she did go to trial quick, because FBI agents and uh, Dweck testified to the point that, and get this, he was given instructions uh, before meetings, which were maybe a half hour up to an hour, uh, and then during meetings he would, you know, if he was texted, he testified in uh, Suarez's trial that it was something important, it was something consequential, that he just wasn't bantering back and forth, that it was something of substantive value if he was texting back and forth with the FBI agents. There was over, it was determined in an evidentiary hearing in the Suarez case that there was as many as 6,000 of these text messages. Um, the defense was saying they were entitled to these text messages because if there was something that Solomon Dweck did or said that was contrary to what was in the text messages, it was a uh, grounds for something to be cross-examined of a mm -hmm. witness. So they asked for them to be turned over. The government refused to be turning over. First they said, they don't exist. There's no such thing. An FBI agent got on the stands, as a matter of fact, said, they don't exist, never did it. Then it was found out that there were text messages and the agent had actually issued 1,000 okay. 1, text messages that he forgot about. Uh, so they were there, the existence. Then the government said, but they had been destroyed. Okay, but the agent that said they didn't exist, mm -hmm. okay, on the stand, under oath, mm -hmm. all right, is there any uh, uh, penalty for this person? Well, he said he had a bad, he just didn't, you know, wasn't done intentionally, so he just couldn't recall. But anyway, there were the government now takes the position that yeah there were there were six thousand messages and they were all destroyed. Then we learned <laughs> that there were two thousand messages that were retained, but they were selectively destroyed or selectively retained. Mm -hmm. So they're telling you, well, the defense uh, Critchley is cross examining the government and all these technicians that they bring forward in their defense, and they're trying to determine, well, how is this, some are, some are deleted, some are not, how, how did this process happen? And it says, well, the server made a determination on, you know, the server, this, the computer, the computer made a determination on what to delete and what, what to keep, mm -hmm. which is absurd, which is right. absurd. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's the defense they put out. And the point is that the judge ruled at the end that, they should have been saved. And the FBI agents, two of them testified that they knew of no guidelines, okay, in the FBI or in the Attorney General's office that said that they had to save text messages even if they were evidence, mm -hmm. okay? Well, lo and behold, there are, there are uh, guidelines that exist and say that evidence in whatever form, you know, given to a confidential informant, must be preserved and they must be put in this file. And, you know, the government knew that as well and they allowed that testimony to, you know, go unchallenged in that case. We intend to resurrect that issue in my case because we're, we're pouncing on the guidelines and the fact that in one of those mm -hmm. instances, in one of the preserved text messages, uh, the FBI guy is saying to Dweck, dirty him up, dirty him up, and Dweck is saying, yeah, like I did the last time. The importance of this is that it, the, circ the incident they're talking about occurs on March 4th, 2009, and that was one of the only, two, one of only two meetings I ever had with Solomon Dweck on that date, and does it pertain to what they were saying, like I did the last time, they were dirtying me up, in other words, they were trying to, uh, impl you know, implicate me in a crime that, that wasn't committed. Mm -hmm. And and that's the issue that, that's at stake in my case. But what my personal belief is why they destroyed these, these documents is, if you remember at the time, Michelle Brown, 
the first assistant U.S. attorney, right. was coming under scrutiny because she had appointed herself in charge of a Freedom of Information Act request that the Corzine campaign was asking about Christie's uh, tenure as United States attorney. Some of them involved her records, and she was shielding them and mm -hmm. delaying them. Um, she got a slap across the wrist by the Department of Justice, which said she, she had a conflict, and they told Mara, remove her from, from, from this process. She resigns. At the same time, this happens. A few months later, the U.S. Attorney's uh, Office is under scrutiny by the New York Times. They have a reporter uh, asking questions about whether or not Michelle Brown made statements to other Justice Department officials who tipped them off that they wanted to bring up the arrest of Bid Rig 3 to a July date to help Christie's campaign. Now, this isn't my words. Mm -hmm. These are the words printed by the New York Times by four sources in the Department of Justice. So, all this is going on, you got to realize, Mike, and now anybody in that office who's saying, oh my God, Look at what they're doing on these text messages to Dweck. And that's about the same period of time that they're deleted. Okay. Okay. I was wondering when when okay. they deleted. At trial, uh, at, at the evidentiary hearing in Suarez's trial, the FBI agent, uh, the technician, is contending, well, we asked in October. We knew that these messages were, were deleted because... November, or about November, we asked the server, which is in Virginia, mm -hmm. okay, uh, to confirm whether or not to confirm whether or not the messages had been deleted. Now, if you started from the premise that they were insignificant, okay, and that you didn't have to preserve them, why is someone, without this hearing ever having transpired by then, calling up? A sir, you know, the, the technician services and asking if the messages were deleted and didn't make it to the server. To me, they were making sure they were deleted. Okay, but now, this, you is, understand? But this is the FBI now. That's correct. Okay. That's so correct. It's not just Christie, it's just not just the well, justice. Well, if, if you have evidence that your office had broken the law by instructing Dweck to do things he shouldn't have done after you read in the paper that four people from the Department of Justice had just dimed out mm. Michelle Brown for what she did with the investigation. You're thinking, oh my God, you know, they, they just came in here about this Brown. You're thinking the worst. So what you're doing is you're, you're going to defend yourself. But I mean, how dirty are all these guys? Never mind that they're destroying the text messages, but that they happen to begin with. That they, well, you know, like... As you put together all the things they were doing, this is a widespread corruption. The power to prosecute and personal ambition is a toxic mix. And that's what you had here. You know, why was Brown doing that? Why was McKenna allowing his criminal, you know, the Special Investigations Division to do this stuff? Where were the safeguards? Where were the things? These mm -hmm. were all people who eventually were going to work well, with Christie. Well, all those people, you can understand. I mean, it's wrong, but you could see what they had to gain from it. Yeah. I'm saying with the FBI guys, what are they going to gain? They're not going to leave the uh, Bureau. We, well, we don't know whether they, you know, what might have been promised. I'm not saying there was anything promised. But we do know is that uh, no one from the U.S. Attorney's Office who monitors what they're doing on the investigation ever corrected their actions. So I assume the agents just felt we're not doing anything wrong. Someone would have told us, and they had, you know, free reign. And you do have uh, uh, there's a written thing in the procedures that says you have to save these. It doesn't say text messages, but it says in whatever form. Right. right? Something That's like that. That's exactly right. Okay. Whatever you instruct the informant to do, it's got to be in his file. Doesn't matter. If it's a text, if it's chiseled on a stone tablet, okay, mm -hmm. or it's sign language, it has to be in that uh, in that file. Okay.